we're here for that. There she goes. Sounds good. I do not believe the injection pump is supplying fuel. It literally starts to break down. It's all gummed up in here. I think this is our problem right here. Finally got it all lined up. Here goes nothing. Fuel shutoff solenoid did not shut the machine off. Probably gonna have to tell the raccoons to move over here shortly. Blue hydraulic line. Oh boy, there it is. Three brand new hoses made. And now shuts off with the key. Definitely didn't do anything to fix that. We can get this old dog to start. I think we definitely have some injector or injection prop problems again. So, well, I've kind of been dreading doing this. So I guess what's a better time than now? I do not want to take the injection pump and injectors out of that machine and then just have the chance of water getting in it. So I have this huge tarp right here, big old monster canvas tarp in awesome shape that we're gonna drape up over the wheel loader forklift and the wheel loader and that'll give us room right between the two of them to get in there and do our work so plus it'll be warmer and this should be interesting all right before we put the tarp on i actually want to remove the exhaust pipe and the reason is i don't want all the weight of that tarp on top of that and potentially breaking 
the, uh, the turbo or the, you know, that exhaust 90 there. So we're going to see if those are going to come loose. And if they're not, I can always just get another clamp, but we'll give it a go. Well, we're up a quarter inch. Better than it was. Okay. Finally. Should not be that hard. Then again, it's an exhaust pipe. They are that hard. Well, what do you think? We got a little structure there. Let's get this injection pump back out and then we're gonna take the injectors out as well. All right, so this blue wire, that is our 12 volts to the coil on the injection pump. the coil but uh, 12 volts to the fuel shutoff solenoid all right so I already got this injector out and so basically it's got two hold down bolts those are bolts so I like to stick a pry bar under either side of this kind of injector and put a pry bar on each ear if I can. Like that. It should come right out. There's a copper crush washer that'll be on the bottom of this. We'll have to get that out. So we're gonna take the injectors as well as the injection pump and get them tested. Um, we'll get the last three out, I guess four, because this is a six cylinder, and the injection pump will be next. So we'll take this cap here, and we'll plug that hole with it, and we'll put the bolts back in just slightly tight. I want to clean up this whole area, and it looks like this valve cover gas, uh, valve cover was glued on with RTV, hence this big chunk that's, uh, squishing out right there so i want to get either the right valve cover gasket or make a valve cover gasket um because i don't want oil leaking out all over everything and i think these injectors probably were also leaking so 
this is definitely a good thing that we're doing all this. We'll get all this oil cleaned up before we get everything put back in. But I tried to clean up around each of the injectors just so that a lot of dirt didn't go falling down in. But these caps will also help with that. All right, I got all the lines off, but I've got the timing mark lined up in the timing window here. The engine is now turned over to top dead center. And I can see on that, there's a mark on the flywheel pulley there. And on the block, there's this line. And now I should be able to pull out. It's not the best way to do to pull this whole shaft out of the pump because of the fact that uh, when I do that, I am messing with the umbrella seals. And But there really is no way for me to disassemble this on the machine without taking that out because of the way that uh, this mechanism is here. So the whole oil cooler for the hydraulics sitting right there, that is in the way. So I can't just pull the whole pump and leave the gear in. And I learned that the last time I did this. So what we'll do is we'll pull this whole shaft and gear out now that we know that the engine is where we want it. And then we'll undo a couple bolts and the whole pump will come out and we'll be ready to rock and roll. All right, so right here, that's our shaft. These are the umbrella seals I'm talking about. If you wanna see this pump in more detail, definitely go watch the video where I, I disassembled this exact pump, completely cleaned it, put it back together with no kit and got it running. And I believe that the same issues that caused it to fail the first time are causing this one to fail again. So that's why we are where we are. So we're going to take it down to Area Diesel Service and have them do it up right. All right, there we go. There's our pump. Oh, yeah, the, the, the fuel coming out of it is just black. It's not good. All right, well, we got the pump out. All the injectors out. Got something on the exhaust there. Um, I'm probably gonna throw a zip tie on. Yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, it'd be fine. Whatever. Um, the last injector in number six, the copper crush washer, is stuck down there, and I can't get it out. I will deal with that later. I am cold. It is late, and all I really needed to do was get the pump and the injectors out so that I can take them with me tomorrow. So that's where we're at. We'll get to cleaning this and detailing this area up a little bit better once we get back with the rebuilt pump and the injectors. This machine is totally worth it. It is a beast when it's running. Now that it's not, it's telling me it needs some attention. So let's give this old dog some attention. I definitely also want to dive into that head gasket, and, or uh, not head gasket, but the uh, valve cover gasket and see if that's leaking or if all of this oil and buildup is from the injector. When he disassembled this for the governor this is how it looked and so the governor spring which is here you just dump that out. the governor spring essentially is right there and there's a, a long rod that threads in right here and so this governor spring needs to ride right down in there on that that metal piece there well this mechanism was pushing that governor spring sideways. And so this mechanism needs to be riding right in there. So now you see it actually sits much nicer in here. It's not as far for or far sideways. So 
spring should look something like that. There's some other pieces in here, uh, but it should have full play like that. And so whether I put it in wrong, which very well may be the case, it, I don't know how it ran so well, if that's the case, but it did. But when he took it apart, it wasn't right, which was causing it to bind up, right? And then giving it a low fuel. Yeah, it was basically holding it in a low fuel okay. situation. Sure. So regardless, we're going to get this back together and it's going to run better than it ever did. So I'm going to pull these pieces back out and give them to him. So, yeah. Sometimes it can be the simplest little thing when you're putting something together like this that can trip you up. I mean, I don't do it every day, so I mean, I'm not at all worried about being wrong or having done something wrong. I mean, that's why a lot of times you get to the point where you just have to reach out to the professionals here. So that's what we're doing. On this uh, standardine pump for the wheel loader here, he's got most of the head here assembled and we're gonna show the flex ring, which is what completely disintegrated on us and essentially goes right in there. And this is a new one here. This is what it looks like. And the problem is, is that I wanted to get a full solid bodied one, but they discontinued the ones for the spline drive. They make them, so this is a spline drive. This is what would fit way down in there, but mine is slightly different, but just like that versus these like square drive. This is one's a lot more common style. And so instead of it having splines, it would have basically a square rectangular key that would fit down into the pump like that. So instead of getting a full solid ring, we're just going to put a new flex ring in, which will essentially fit here. And I'll show you, um, he'll show you the way he's going to do that here in a second. But that was a failure point. And then obviously we may have had the Governor's governor mechanism might have been slightly off so i don't remember it being that way but whatever at the end of the day when he opened it up it wasn't in the right spot and that caused a low to no fuel situation which was definitely what it was doing uh when i was trying to start it so let's uh let's see what it takes to put one of these in here's a flex ring here for people who don't do this every day this is probably the harder part that they struggle with is putting this on Luckily for me, with enough experience, you get to learn how to do it fairly quickly. So I always put it on this first because then the weight cage is going to fit into there, which will then allow it to come through. So stretch that out. And now it's on the pin. It also is important that you get those grooves underneath those pins cleaned out because obviously this has to fit back underneath there. So that's half of it. Here's the other half. Just like that. Cool. Like it was nothing. That makes sense. And so explain to me what why is that there and what what is the thought behind it rather than it being solid like they kind of change to eventually so basically with this one having the flex ring the flex ring is just to give it enough of a cushion enough flex basically mm -hmm. so that way as the pump is running it helps get rid of it helps actually cushion the action of it going against the cam lobe because you know it's hitting every single time mm -hmm. so it helps give it some cushion there it doesn't just jar and also it helps smooth out your governor a little bit makes sense. that's why whenever that's broke a lot of times guys will have their tractor rpms just not be steady and it'll jump around because that's it's clacking inside sure. of there yeah so but with the new style instead of using a flex ring it's not solid in a sense because instead of a ring like this there's actually cushions Oh, okay. Built inside of it. Oh, that are internal? Yeah, that are uh, internal. So there's still a cushion to it. Like a solid shaft, and then there's like a rubber bushing, right. and it just can't degrade and being come Correct. in contact. Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. So, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's I just, thought it was just a straight solid piece you know, that would marry these two together and then just right. eliminate any kind of uh, flexibility. 
Okay. So basically there's cushions on every oh. single one of these pins. And that gives us just a little bit of play. It's yeah. very, very minute, but yeah. it gives it just enough Couple cushion mm -hmm. to to take the, to the abuse. Abuse, yeah. Sure. So, okay. But with that, you don't have the flex string sure. pulling apart and getting inside the pump. That last one came out of a machine from 1965. Well, it is 2022 and almost 2023. This will last a long time, so I'm not overly worried about it. This is not a production machine. We're not going to be running it hardcore. So at the end of the day, this flex ring, it's a better material, is it not? Yeah, I believe so. That's what I've read. Um, and so, yeah, this will do everything I needed to do and probably the next generation, everything they needed to do, if not Yeah, more. and you'll probably have to rebuild the engine before you have to rebuild it. So, that. yeah, and that's, I'm not too worried about I did want that, but I only wanted that because... I read that that's an upgrade, yeah. and the problem is, is just getting one and not having the ability to find one for a flex or for a shaft that has that spline on it, which is okay. Okay, so now basically with setting the head, I'm going to put this on here just because it helps me set the head a little bit. So I line up my timing lines there with the pin, and if you get that one tooth off, it makes a big difference. Stick my clip back on there. So right there, there's a notch on that shaft, and that notch needs to line up with the line on that copper plate there, or the line right next to the L. And so if it doesn't line up that way, then your timing will be off. And I know this is not a great shot of it, but that's what he's talking about as far as lining up the timing. So now I will pull this out. And I put these shoes in here with the wear side to the least to the right way. way. Okay, I guarantee they're probably not in the same slot that they were in, oh, but whatever. at least the the wear side is the same. So explain what we're doing here. Like, what is this? What are we setting? So basically, what we're setting is as this is going to spin around, this gauge is going to move. So there's two Just different a dial caliber, right? Yeah, there's okay. two different settings. There's one setting that is the difference between every single one of these rollers. Okay. So one is going to be, most likely they're going to be a little different between each set. But you can only have a few thousandths with this. And then sure. we're going to measure each, each pair lobe. Oh, okay. of rollers to make sure they're within a certain amount of each other. Okay. Because if you have... Because they're 90 out, they're 180 out of each other? Basically. Okay. Because if they're too far out of skew then let's say this one is sticking out further than this one, and technically this one is going to contact the lobe on the cam sooner, sooner yeah. than this one will. Sure, and put offset pressure. Yeah, it's gonna be uneven Uneven, that's pressure. a better word, yeah. So, basically I gotta hook air to this. That's just going to be our zero point. That one's five out. That's out of spec. That one's way out. That one's ten. That one's seven. So you just start by picking one, I just and pick that's one. your zero point. Yeah. Okay, makes sense. So now we're going to try and, and play with this a little bit. And so that's what these adjusting bolts do you well, know okay you're just gonna try and find the right one uh, right now I'm just trying to get all these as close to zero as possible okay so sometimes all you have to do so like this one was our zero mm -hmm. this one was five thousand slow and then this one was ten thousand slow and that one was about seven thousand slow so these two are pretty close but technically this one was high and this one was low so I'm just gonna switch those out okay just to see what that does for me. So if we had gotten the exact holder and roller into the exact spot it was in, I like it may, theor theoretically it yeah. should have been pretty Closer. close. Yeah. Okay. Theoretically speaking. But if you were to disassemble this completely and just yeah. ignore that, right. 
like you, you guys do, yeah. this is how you would deal with right. it. Right. Okay. Yeah, see, now it... I always wondered that, because with, with some of the specific details these right. need, how do you keep them right? One's about two under. One's about half over. Yeah, see, now we're yep. a lot close. Yeah. Just by switching those two. Yep. So now I'm going to measure across. And this is where you actually check your roll to roller spec. And are you just squeezing them together so they're not kicking out? No. Nope. I'm just just barely touching them. Yep. Okay. Yeah, because if you if you squeeze them in at all, that's not a correct reason. Okay. Because the air is forcing them out. I see. Oh, okay. Against the leaf. Spurs. Oh, so they are right now because of the air, they're kicked out like correct. they would be if it was spinning. Correct. Okay. So our other one was at nine seventy five. This one's at nine seventy five. And our other one is at 977. So that's perfectly in spec. Okay. We are actually a little bit over on our roller to roller in comparison to mm -hmm. what stock spec is. Sure. So. But it's runnable. That's how you, you'd be fine yeah. with it. Yeah. Sure. So we were. So actually, if it was me, I would turn it up some more. And is that just these? Yes. Okay, so, so you would just slightly adjust. Yeah, so that's probably what we'll do because... So I, when I took my, this apart, mm -hmm. these two, I did not touch them. Right. And I absolutely just left them alone. I read that they were set to a specific yeah. point and I did not want to mess the with it. you guys got to know about some of these pumps is all of them tend to have their own little idiosyncrasies like that. And right. if you were to dissemble that, which it's easy to do, it'd be just yeah. grab an Allen wrench. And take it out. And you would literally not have this set up this test rig yeah. to be able to tell you where it goes right so and then you would end up here at dairy diesel service yeah. anyway so and normally whenever you adjust these you want to adjust what is that clicking like is it is no, it's it just because the screw is tight oh okay so it's, it's just... not it's not like a, a a setting no okay and so as we turn that in you know, it lets the rollers come out further, so okay. then you have to re-zero your. That makes sense. You have to find a new zero and then right. and then measure from there. But also, whenever you do that, it could change the total setting because then it puts it on a new part of the leaf spring. Okay. So it's okay, right about where I would leave it. Okay. So we didn't have to adjust it much, thankfully. Well, sure. And unless they just by changing those two shoes, it, it brought it back, out. yeah. Yeah, so basically whenever the air was, it was pushing those out. Push, yeah, so these rollers, they, they kick out once the engine is spinning enough. And that's yeah. that's what then, as that cam ring is on this, right. the cam ring contacts this, pushes it back in, which sends a squirt of fuel to each injector, correct? Yeah, so you have your your charging port and your discharge port. Okay. So then basically as it's spinning, it winds up with the charging port, forces fuel in, then as it's spinning, hits the cam lobe, scores it in, and that's what winds squirts. it up with the discharge okay. port, sends it Sends it out to the injector, okay. Yeah. And it's doing that, who knows how many times it's... Um, six times per... Rotation. Per rotation. Yeah. So, sure. yeah, those are constantly going in and out. Sure. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, so basically now the head is set, and... All right, so Let's put it together. If you want to watch the reassembly of all this, go check out the video where I take apart the Forbidden Magic Box on the Alice Chalmers wheel loader out in the barn, and I actually did it in my shop. But I literally went through putting all this back together. I'm not going to make you watch that again. Go check that out. Are you just checking the solenoid? Yeah. I'm making sure it's packing stuff off. Yeah. Okay.
All right, so now on that wheel loader, since we really don't know how the injectors are, we're going through the pump still, we're gonna pop test these. And like you've seen in previous videos, basically it's where we hook it up to a line and then they literally pump this, this arm here and it puts pressurized diesel pressure through the line essentially the way the injection pump is going to do it on any diesel engine and allows them to see the spray coming out of the tip of the injector but also the pressure at which it's doing that at the pressure at which it's atomizing that fuel and dumping it into the cylinder this is a four hole tip down here you can see the the fuel is atomizing coming out we got four holes that are good we do have a leak up here but we got a part on order for it so anyhow that one there i'm not really liking your tip is actually sticking or worn out okay and that's why it doesn't create a crisp pop right there when it's and doing it, it and you see it kind uh, of leaking off yeah yeah when you get a machine built in 1965 you never have a history with it so yeah. <laughs> especially it's a barn find different yeah. Yeah. <laughs> including me so and you can see that one there i'm almost thinking your tips this is what a good sign is you can see how these it's not atomizing the fuel it's just spraying out yep okay so that there we consider a bad injector and a bad okay so more, more than likely with two of these out of six having issues we're going to do a complete rebuild on them we'll okay. take them all the way down buff them up wash all the parts look at the tips see if they're worn if we think we can uh green rouge them and free them up and we'll reuse them sure if not we'll have to buy tips for them okay <clears throat> How often does that happen? Is it pretty often? Really? Yep. Makes sense. About the only thing to go bad in an injector is the tip. Yeah, because that's where fuel's coming across it's it. It's the only thing that's doing any motion. Yeah, sure. You, can, you might get broken springs if you get water in them or something like that. Sure. And you can see that one. It seems like it's atomizing fuel. So basically, because at the end are you looking at the end how yes. how misty it is yeah. not not so yeah. much the spray at the tip yes as long okay. as it's misting that's, okay that's, that's a good word to use right versus the, that one With was more of a, a stream yep. yeah, yeah okay it's a straight line you're not atomizing fuel so in that case you're probably dumping more fuel into that cylinder i guess and yeah. with it not atomizing it's not really combusting that sure. fuel yeah and, and then more of it gets sent out through the exhaust yes yeah that makes sense so in, now, would that be in the form of black smoke at that point, or would it be white? Hot black smoke, that would be. Because it, it's still compressing in the cylinder and then yeah, turning good. black. Well, for right now, yeah, we would stop on these if we wanted to see what they were actually. That other one was at about 210. You can see how this one's popping off. If you look at that needle, you know, it's got a good crisp pop to okay, it. Okay, so you're calling the pop the yep. way that that needle shakes? Yep. Okay. Yep. And if it was a dud cylinder, it would pretty much just, psh, it'd have one click. It wouldn't sit okay. there and chatter like that. So Meaning stuck open. That means your tip is either sticking at some point in there closed sure. or open, one or the other. Okay. But that one there is at 215. So these, we'll send them in for a full rebuild and we'll go through them all the way. So you wouldn't even do the rest of them. If you find one or two cylinder or one or two injectors that aren't working right, you'd stop and yep. just do them all because the you want everyone in the engine to be Yep, as everyone's close. got to be crisp. Okay. Uh, if you had just one doing that flutter, you'd notice it on the engine. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. So, yeah, if you guys need your injectors gone through, they're not just going to fix one of them no. and send it back to you and have it right. They're going to give them all to you so that you get the same exact kind of uh, pattern in each cylinder. And yeah, that's... if we change, if we put a new tip in one, we'll put new tips in all of them. Sure. Because you just you really don't want to mix and match yeah. uh, used tips with a new sure. tip. Just the action on the engine will be different. So. Makes sense. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you for doing that. Yeah. Glad we were able to see that. Yeah. Okay, we are back from getting the pump rebuilt there at Area Diesel Service. So, one thing to note that they would normally paint these pumps. They would paint it to whatever matching color-ish they could for the for the machine that it was going on. I did not care about that. I kind of like the aluminum look, but fully rebuilt. I mean, we, they literally replaced everything that was broken, like those these four screws. They were all about to be broken, plus their hex head now, which is awesome. Six fully rebuilt injectors, but I did keep the one that said Alice Chalmers. So this is probably one of the original ones, 
has some of the original orange right here, which I thought was awesome. The one thing that they these things have is this like seal here. It's like a foam deal, and I thought it was like an actual seal seal, but it's more so like a dust seal. And so somebody had stuck two of those there and kind of let it compress in there. Well, all of these new rebuilt ones, they have that as well. So they've got that foam thing. Well, I decided instead of just using that foam thing, I found four, well, not four, six O-rings that I'm going to stick in there with that. And all these do is basically keep dirt and debris from getting down around the injector. The actual seal is done by that copper crush washer right there. It's supposed to snow like eight or ten inches, and I need to get my little tent thing taken down. So let's go get this stuff put back in so we can get the machine put back together and then get it running. All right, here's our pump. So we'll get that in next. First, we've got to feed this through this plate here. Oh, they're tighter. Give me a half inch or nine sixteenths. And do we have that little Milwaukee impact, the long skinny one out here? Oh god. And I'll grab the hat. Oh yeah, do that. And uh we've got sockets out here too? Uh yeah. Okay. Uh do you want a quarter inch? I mean half inch sockets. At, um I think we've got some in the drawers. So Ryan's gonna go grab a few impacts. We're gonna get this cover off here. So for those that don't know, Ryan is my brother. One of my brothers. I've got, I'm from a big family. And I really enjoy working with my brothers. I enjoy showing them all this crazy stuff I do. And you'll probably see a lot more Ryan in the videos as time comes, but he works very hard. I'm proud to have him here at Salvage Workshop. I mean, he's a salvage, so yeah, there's that. Okay, so this gear here has to be fed through this hole, and then the umbrella seal goes on this way. So I figured this out when I was basically doing it out there on the barn where we rescued it, but I cannot get this shaft into this plate unless I do it right now. So that's what we're doing. We're gonna get that in there. Do we have any uh, light oil? Can you grab that thing of uh, light oil? So I do wanna get a little bit of oil on the seal so it'll go on there nicely. And then we're gonna have to move it around until we find the right gear to line it up. All right, so get this spray, get some light oil on this one. So these umbrella seals, they face opposite each other. And there is a special tool for putting these on, but we'll just Fold it back the other way. So get it into the groove. And we flop it. Let's keep it going all the way in there. So this is what keeps fuel in the injection pump and not in the timing housing. So there's a keyway inside that shaft right there that has to meet up with the keyway in the pump itself. So that'll be the next hurdle. All right, I'm gonna take this timing cover off, which is right here.
Another thing we did when we uh, rebuilt it is we kept the original Stanodyne tag. They asked me, do you want the original one or do you want a new one? And I was like, well, if we could save the old one, that'd be great. And so we did. So. Well, shoot, I gotta line up the marks in this. Alright, I'm gonna pull this back out, which is gonna be awesome. Should have lined these timing marks up before I put the shaft in, but we can't all be perfect. All right, so we're gonna I'm gonna stick this in here, and now it's moving the inner mark. So we're gonna line up. There it is, right there. We're gonna line up that mark with the mark, the stationary mark, right there. And then we're going to pull it out. So now, those two marks, right in there, are lined up. So now what we can do is I, can, I can't show you very well, but I can look down in there and see where it's clocked at. It is literally at about 3 o'clock. Now we'll reinstall butterfly seals. You know they're butterfly seals because they flap like butterflies. And if you believe that one, I got another one for you. They just are butterfly seals. I don't know why. I'm sure in the comments you can tell me. It did slightly tear this umbrella seal. It would probably be fine, but they did give me a few extras, so in this instance, I'm not going to reuse it. If I didn't have another one, you better believe I'd be reusing it, but not today. So this is just light oil, like a WD-40. It's actually PB Blaster's version of WD-40, their light oil. I love the smell of it. It smells amazing. I don't know why I like it, but I do. I'm gonna take off these uh, these two nuts and the washers. These are what hold the pump on. So many times I'll put the hardware back onto a spot just to not have to remember what went where. Especially if I'm not gonna be re replacing it that next instant. It just makes it simpler, makes it easier for me and all my other projects that I have going to remember. All right. So now, let's see if we can get this, this beast in there. So we're going to have to pull this out. Something about like that. So the other butterfly seal has to go in without contacting or ripping or folding back. That's where a pick comes in. So you can kind of like go all the way around it as you're inserting it. There we go. Now we completely lost our mark in regards to where that pump is at, but, or where the gear is at, but it will only fit into this pump one way. So what I can do is kind of hold it like this and see I'm staring at these marks, but I'm also trying to feel where, where is this gear going to start engaging? I'm getting close. See, if I was able to remove this whole injection pump, take this housing cover off, leave the gear on, I wouldn't have to do any of this. And that would be possible if it wasn't for this oil cooler here. And so, so it's just literally tooth by tooth trying to fit it in. And it will literally go kunk 
all the way in and lock in to the back of the pump and then I will be able to see the timing mark with the possibility for it to move. So I'm just going one tooth on into the next tooth. And another thing is I can't pull it out all the way to know exactly where the mark is to get myself to that three o'clock because those umbrella seals have to feed through this plate. Sometimes stuff like this can be so tedious. But that's how the cookie crumbles. Just gotta deal with it. I probably have every single gear to go through and then I'll find it and it's the last one. All right, I took it back out and basically made a mark on that gear and was able to get it all the way in there and this timing window, I can slightly move the pump a little bit. That just allows me to then right, right there. We've got our pump totally lined up in the timing window. So we'll tighten down these two nuts here. And then we'll get that cover buttoned up. Got to make sure to put our, our button back on. Basically this keeps tension on that shaft so that the gear cannot bounce out because if it does it will affect some of the moving parts on the inside so i gotta tighten that nut back down tighten these two here and then we'll put the cover on and that that button kind of just rides just like that all right so let's get these injectors in so these are slightly different in that they're not as tall there's a couple of pieces of the other ones that are missing or Basically, it's a different style inside. The depth, the injector nozzle, all of that is all exactly how it should be. So the only thing, they only come with this foam rubber. It's, it's more like foam. And so it makes a seal right here where this plug's at and keeps dirt and debris out. So I thought, well, you know what? Forget that. We're gonna put an O-ring and then the foam thing just to kind of give it another little, maybe a better seal. It shouldn't affect anything, and I'm not too worried about it, but we're gonna get this cap off the nozzle. All right, so I want these copper crush washers to stay cupped towards the top. So we're just gonna put a little dab of grease on them. So that as I insert them in, it doesn't flop forward. So, like, like so. So we'll insert that. And in there. So we'll see, that O-ring may or may not work. We'll find out. All right, let's cut the, the wire. When they first uh, did this, I looked at them and I was like, is this a joke or something? Like, like what's the, like, how am I supposed to use it? I need the throttle. And he goes, no, 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 no. That's just to keep it back so that all of the weights stay in there right. And I was like, oh, I thought it was some sort of a joke. But now that we have it all in there, we can cut it. Maybe we can cut it. And now and get it out of our way. There's our throttle. It's a train. I hear a train. Long black train. Got it all back together. It is like in the 10 or 20s. I don't know how cold it is, but there's a, there's a night before a big snowstorm. It's like midnight. Got all the injectors in, injection pump is in, all the lines are in, got all the wiring hooked back up, got the belts back on. We're gonna throw the hood back on real quick and then basically drape the rest of the tarp up over just the wheel loader. Um, I'm gonna put a can over the, the turbo and we'll deal with getting that over and then we're gonna put this green tarp literally just on the engine. Um, yeah, 
A uh, big push just to get this thing back together. I wanted to get all the holes plugged so no water could get into anything anywhere um, when it comes time for all that snow to melt off. But heck yes, Ryan and I busted our asses tonight and got it all back together. So next time you see it, it might be buried in 10 inches of snow. We'll see. All right, well, it hasn't snowed yet. So apparently the snow got pushed toward the end of uh, tonight. So before the snow happens, I'm gonna jump back on the wheel loader here, get a few more things put back on, and we're gonna see if we can fire it up. Let's jump in, we're gonna get that green tarp off, open up the hood, and start getting some lines bled. So it's a balmy like 20 degrees Fahrenheit today and I'm all bundled up but let's give you a little better look at the new injectors and that height oh man you hear that I do love the sound of a good Jake break anyway so the height of the injectors being slightly lower it's actually not a bad thing at all it really does bring even the fuel line a little bit further away from the exhaust manifold, the turbo, the air intake. So it was a complete bear trying to get these lines back in. We did get them all properly put together on the injection pump. It's all timed right. The wire for the shutoff solenoid is in there. We're going to hook back up to this clicky clack that I got in there. And we're just going to disconnect it from the fuel tank on the machine and we're going to connect it to a five gallon jug right here. That tank, it's dirty and I do not want to completely fill up the whole system with nasty fuel. But the other thing we're going to do today is I do have a new air filter for it. So we're going to throw that in because that one is really, really dirty. But let's jump right into getting the fuel system hooked up so we can crack these lines and start bleeding them off. There's only three bolts to hold it. One here, two on the other side. This one, there's literally no nut. So I'll deal with that later. All right, here's the setup. Got the fuel line going into this jug. Goes to a little clicky clack, which feeds the fuel filter, which then feeds the injection pump. So this here, this line here, this goes to the tank. We're not gonna use We're gonna that. Connect 12 volts to the clicky clack. And honestly, we should probably go ahead and change that filter now because anything in it, we don't want it feeding into the line. Okay, get this filter off. It's a very important gasket. If you don't have that inner ring, fuel will not get filtered. It will literally just bypass the filter. So I don't think that the fuel system is as uh, as full of junk as we initially thought because the pickup screen on the injection pump itself was still perfectly clean. And if we dump out the other filter and it looks perfectly clean too, then I believe all that black dirt and stuff that was coming out of it was not from the lines, it was more so from that flex ring disintegrating. Since the flex ring disintegrated in the injection pump here, it just filled it with all that gunk and goo and caused its own issues and basically stopped it up. So now we're changing this filter out of just pure, like we might as well, I'd rather not create a problem. So we're gonna do that, I'm gonna wipe it down real quick we're gonna check the hours on the machine put the hours on the machine plus the date on the filter Let's see what we got for hours we have 4878.7 what wait what that's what that says right four eight Seven eight point seven. Well, I did not know that this thing 
was a DeLorean because we just went back in time on this thing. Not only did it not register any hours that I put on it since I've had it, but we went backwards. I have 4,879 hours on the filter and that thing said 4,778 hours. So I think we officially know that that hour meter is not right. <laughs> well, I'm gonna mark the date on it. I'll put the hours on it anyway. I need to chase that down. I'll bet you it's just an electrical issue. Um, I mean, especially when you see stuff like all these disconnected wires. I mean, half the gauges don't work. It's what's to be expected from a machine from 1965. It's in amazing shape for what it is, but they always all have problems. And disconnected this and, you know, missing that kind of stuff. So we're going to move on. The filter's in there. It's full of fuel. We're going to start uh, a little clicky-clack, pushing fuel, pushing fuel uh, into the filter and then into the pump. And then once we get fuel to the pump, we're going to take and start cranking it over and seeing what we get up here at the injector. our dirty filter and I think before we put the new one in there we ought to get all that out of it that's pretty dirty so the filters not any better but we do have another one so let's let's match that up make sure it's the right one exactly and then we'll get this cleaned out and then we got to clean out uh, the cover there and we'll get the filter in all right check it out this thing is chock full of dust i mean it does not look good at all but we got a new wix 42119 and this one's a napa 2119 so guarantee that was made by wix so here's our filter, about the same size, same hole, and we get a new, new washer for it. So yeah, this will work. I think we need another washer there because there's a slight chance dust could suck right past that. It's not making a good seal. And I don't have the original like uh, wing nut that should be there. So I'm going to go get another smaller washer to try and seal that up. It's clicking. I can feel it. All right. Clicky clack is engaged down there. We're gonna crank it over and look for fluid. Fuel coming out of these right here. So we've got all six of these cracked. All right, go ahead and crank it, which means turn the key first. Yep, I heard our solenoid click down there. All right, wonderful, we, we got no battery. <laughs> all right. Go ahead and turn that key back off. I gotta figure out a battery situation here. All right, so far we've got fuel on one and two. All right, let's go ahead and crank it. Stop. A lot of smoke. Out of that little hole there, got a little hole there. All right, go ahead and crank it again. Stop. So in the bottom of the turbo, there's like a little drain weep hole that should be there. But then on the exhaust manifold, there's a hole right there that should not. And so at some point, I'd like to braze that. I don't know if I'd have any luck finding a new exhaust manifold for this. It's a 3500 
Alice Chalmers engine. Um, but I think I could braze that hole and it would be fine for a long time. But we are dealing with battery issues here. I'm kind of thinking we're low. Um, and I don't have my third jumper pack here. Kind of wondering if I give it a little ether and just try and pull a prime with ether. I've done it before when I've had low battery, so maybe we'll do that just due to the battery situation we're dealing with. Crank it. Got two batteries, one jumper pack, all installed. Give it a shot now. You can crank it. We're pretty much primed. As soon as we're gonna get. Alright, crank it. Again. We just don't have enough power. It's cold. <laughs> Diesel engines hate the cold. Right? Do I hold it when it starts? That's what I thought. Right. Well, it is running. 
It is not running well. I think we're getting air in the line somewhere. Something might not be tight. I don't know. <laughs> not the exciting moment I wanted it to be, a bit just barking back to the life like it did last time. All right, so we are finally back on the old wheel loader. The big problem I was having, and it's been probably pretty much since the winter since I've messed with it. So it was pouring out like white slash grayish black smoke and it wasn't running really well. And so it can either be one of two things. The injection pump is not properly timed or I added an additional O-ring underneath the injector right here at the seal to be able to try and keep more dirt and debris out. I really don't think that's the problem because this, the true seal for air and fuel is down there about that deep into the actual head itself. So I don't know. I'm going to start by basically pulling all the injectors, removing the O-ring that I added and putting it back in. And then we're going to try and start it because getting to the injection pump is much more difficult and a lot more work. Um, so we we'll start with what's easy and kind of eliminate that because the only two changes we made on this machine was to rebuild the injection pump and replace all six injectors. So everything else, nothing has changed. So we're gonna get the hood off here, set up a little bit of a, uh, an umbrella, and then we're gonna start diving into it. So I found this thing on the side of the road and somebody was getting rid of it probably because of the holes that are in it. But for this, I don't really care. It allows us some nice shade right over the top of where we need to work. So we're going to throw a ratchet strap around it down here. Another one up there should be good to go. I really want to make a stand for that at some point, but not today. New copper crush washer. Put that seal just there. All right, well, injectors are back in. Let's uh, prime it with a little ether and see if it'll fire up. Well, it runs. <laughs> All right, well, it runs. Problem is, I think it's timing. That's what it's done every other time I've got it started. Basically, it just chugs smoke like that, and I don't think the injectors were the issue, but it was the easiest thing to do. So next step is pull the injection pump, make sure everything's aligned right, and we'll go from there. Two more bolts. I don't want to break anything, so. All right, this is the turbo 
and exhaust manifold for the Alice Chalmers wheel loader, right there is a hole that exhaust gas is coming out of. So I'm gonna kind of gently kind of clean it up with the die grinder and we're just gonna put some braze on it. All right, well, so that's how it turned out. So we got it patched. It did kind of bust open on me about right here because that metal was just so thin. This is a stop gap. Um, I did have to make a new plug for that because the other one was brass and it was kind of stripped out. So that is literally just barely capping. There's a crack that runs right from there all the way through, through the middle all the way to right there. And so I really do need a new exhaust manifold for this. Um, it's in three pieces. So essentially you have your, your middle section, basically from here to there, and then your front and your rear, whichever side they are. Um, obviously, Alice Chalmers parts are not easy to come by, so um, I'm gonna keep my eyes out but the turbo should still be good and for now at least when I'm trying to work on it I don't have exhaust shooting me in the face that was really the main point so let this cool down a bit more and we will be back tomorrow to finish it up and put it back on okay I finally figured out the issue with the timing so I had correctly had it installed, these two marks on. I had the engine at top dead center. I'll show you that out there when we get out there. But apparently you don't want it at top dead center. Okay, right here it says that you want the timing gear housing cover aligned with the 34 degree before top dead center stamped on the pulley and the dampener assembly. The engine is now properly positioned for the installation of the fuel injection pump. So, so right here on this front crankshaft pulley, there are marks. And then there's an actual casting, basically line here, the pointer that tells you where, where we are on timing on the engine. So we're gonna go back, I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you exactly where it is right now. We're gonna back it off back to 34 degrees before top dead center, and then just stick the injection pump back on. So on the pump right there, you see the scribed line on that side, and you see 
the solid line engraved or, or stamped into this side. So those two lines in this timing window need to be lined up with each other and then the pump will be in time. But the engine also has to be at 34 degrees before top dead center. And it kind of makes sense because then it's injecting fuel before compression is complete on that cylinder. And a lot of engines, they factor that in for you without having you need to, I guess, figure that out or know that. And so when you put it at top dead center, you just put the injection pump in and you don't have to worry about any, any, uh, you know, setting the timing before at a certain degree. Um, this engine just happens to be that way. I haven't run into this before. So yeah, let's go change that. We'll put the pump back in and hopefully we can get this thing running beautifully again. So I don't usually buy uh, a lot of the manuals for the machines that I own just because they can be expensive, but I found this one on eBay and this is a Department of the Army technical manual for the Alice Chalmers, let's see, where is it? Uh, Alice Chalmers model TL645. So the beauty of military manuals is they are extremely thorough. I mean, this thing goes into every single detail of every single thing, which is amazing. Um, and when I first got the machine, I didn't have it. And so when we got it running out in the barn that we found it in, it was, you know, I guess I just did a good job getting the two timing marks lined up because I never even knew about the mark on the pulley. And so I'm glad I had this because I was racking my brain trying to figure out what the heck I was doing wrong here. And that little detail, that one little line is the only line in the whole book that answers my questions about what we need to do here. So let's go get that done. Yeah. And then another big thank you I want to shout out is one of my viewers sent me the parts manual the military parts manual for that same machine, the Alice Chalmers model TL645. And it goes into very, very detail. For instance, that's the exhaust manifold that I need. There's three pieces. There's the center section, the front section, and then the rear section. And then you would reference figure number five. You go back to the front, you find figure number five, and then you got a list and name of all the parts the, the part number, how many are needed, etc. So awesome to have it. Big thank you to a viewer who sent me that. Check it out. This is where the injection pump rides, right there. It sits right in there. And this is where it goes in. And the gear meshes with the timing gears and under that timing cover there. So if you look right there, there's our degree wheel on the crankshaft pulley. And this little finger right here is what denotes where we are. We are basically sitting about a line and a half before top dead center. So I pretty much had it set to top dead center and put it back in that way. And clearly, based on what the manual states, it needs to be at 34 degrees. So we've got 10, 20, 30, 35. So right about there, Right about there is where I need to turn this wheel this way. And then I should be able to install everything properly, get those lines mounted, and then boom, have it set and have it exactly what we need. All right, so we're going to use the inch and a half socket on the crank. We should pull, turn it down towards us. Okay, we're at. 20 degrees, 30 degrees, and 30, I think that I went 35, so let's just go back a tick, 34 degrees. All right, there it is. So let's get that pump back in. All right, before we go putting everything back together, I want to clean up and get as much of this oil and grease and dirt off of the machine so I can start to see what leaks we may have. We might have a valve cover leak. The other thing that I think I want to do is we're going to pull the injectors back out and where I put that o-ring, we're going to put that o-ring back in. I really want to try and seal off as much dirt and debris as I can out of that that chamber where the injector goes. And so um, we're going to do that 
But first, I want to cap these lines on the injectors. And I've got this. I got this from a company called Hercules Seals. And they've got this awesome assortment kit of caps and plugs. So they've got all kinds of different. Some of them are push-in style. Some of them are threaded to go on to certain things. And some of them are the female or the male side, the male threaded. So let's see what we can figure out. That one looks kind of close. Maybe that one. All right, that one fits down there for that side of it. All right, let's get this all blown off. So I see they didn't have the right length bolt. So they replaced it with a bolt and a nut on it. Mm -hmm. I guess it got it done, but so, try and keep them in the same plot place they were. That looks really good in there. Yeah, nice and clean. No major problems screaming at me. I did loosen up all these injectors to uh, install them with an O-ring instead of a that little foam piece. Yeah, this looks nice. Okay, I figured it out. So. There's a bunch of RTV right around this spot where the valve cover seals. Well, you see that? There's a stud in there, and it's actually half inch. All the rest of these are, I think, the heads are 7 16 but they're quarter 20. That is not that way. It's bigger. And so it's welded in there. So this, this RTV here was added to just try and give it a good seal. Um... It's literally ground down lower all the way along that spot. So I'm betting a lot of oil has been leaking out of right there all over this area. I don't, without taking it out, welding, and then, then milling it flat, I don't really see a good solution other than to just clean it and do exactly what they did. Beyond that, I don't see any other real issues under the valve cover here. Nothing screaming broken, but I mean, I guess this works. I don't know if JB Weld is a good idea in this spot. I mean, it's not doing anything other than just sealing oil from leaking out of the valve cover. So it might be an option. I'm going to clean it up. We'll figure out what to do. Actually, now that I look at it, I think it is, you know, JB Weld or one of those. They didn't weld this in there. They JB welded it. So the, you can see that like white stuff that's coming off. And they didn't keep, they didn't try and get it as flat all the way across. They just filled it with RTV. I almost want to give it a shot building that back up. I don't know. I'm going to ponder on that and we'll figure out what to do. All right, so I'm going to add some RTV along the bottom of this. Just enough to kind of try and help seal it. I'm not going to mess with that bolt at all. We're just going to, we're just going to move on.
Let's get up that tube. See if you can. That should do it. Hopefully that seals. We'll find out. I'm gonna let that sit for a few minutes and then we're gonna put the bolts back in and seal it up. All right, got the pump back in. And if you look right there, you can see the two timing marks. If I move it, I've got adjustment up and down. So I want those two timing marks lined up perfectly right there. And I'll tighten down these two nuts Already got the cap on with a little spring retainer. And we are still sitting at exactly 34 degrees before top dead center. So now we've got the arduous process of getting all of the banjo bolts and lines back up to the injectors. Once we have that done, we'll put the manifolds on and miscellaneous other things. Should be good to go very soon. Fingers crossed, can get this old dog to bark back to life. You're gonna wanna hang by the turbo, grab it by the turbo. It has been a long day assembling this motor and all its fuel components back together. So I think we're ready. Let's, uh, let's throw the jumper pack on it. Get that hooked up there. I am very optimistic this time. <laughs> all right, go ahead and start cranking it. either. All right, we're going to start checking these for fuel, try and get it primed. This thing is gonna run so well. It's running on like one or two cylinders.
All right, let's get all these tightened up. All right, I think we are set. I think that the fuel is primed. Let's see if this old dog wants to bark back to life. Here we go. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Finally! Man, this has been a long time coming, I tell you. I had it running great when I first got it at that, in the barn, and then the fuel injection pump kind of just got all gummed up. Finally got it timed right. And she runs like a top. That's cooling. Well, we got a coolant leak. I am betting it is the lines that go up to this heater core. Yeah. They probably finally decided to leave the chat. But that coolant leak, I do not want to run it too long. See these lines here? They come off the engine there. They go to this electric coolant heater. And then they run all professionally through here. And then they go up to a, a line in the cab, which basically there's a, a little uh, heater core. They run through that and they come back out here. I'm betting that we're leaking. Yep, I can see the drips. See the drips right there above my finger? They're coming right out of the cab. What I thought was gonna happen has happened. Right in here. Yep, I see the cut, right? Right there, it's cut. So my plan is to get rid of that heater core. I already took out the original seat. This seat, I want to put in here, but I can't quite get it in where I want it with the heater core in the way. So I'm not overly worried about the heater itself. If I want to add it back later, that's possible I can do that. I have a few more of them. I think for now, the plan will be to remove that and just completely block the lines off. So, but I don't want to run it anymore while we have that going on. At least we now know that the dang thing will run like a top after just a little bit of fine tuning with the with the timing there. So that made all the difference in the world for getting this thing in properly. Obviously you saw that we had the injection pump rebuild by, by uh, area diesel service and those guys are amazing at what they do. So I was not in any way, shape or form thinking that the pump was the issue because it wasn't. Um, rebuilt injectors absolutely awesome i love how this thing will will give us a good puff of smoke when you really get on it hard i like that in old machines i know a lot of people may disagree with me that's fine everybody has their own opinion but for me personally these old dogs were built in another time this thing was built in 1965 and it still lives today you tell me one machine that you could buy maybe within the last 15 years maybe 10 years and newer that's gonna be around as long as this has been and as long as this will be, I'd be all for it. But not only can I not afford those, <laughs> I 
I love the simplicity of a machine like this. Very few wires. You do not need a degree in electronics and a scanner and a ton of code ability to be able to get one of these machines up and running and put it to work. So I want to deal with all this old rubber and we obviously already had a coolant leak but we've got you know a hose little tubing there a little piece of tubing here there's all this red tubing that goes up to the heater core so I want to take and find a cap cap that cap that there is uh from the compressor itself there's a line that goes from here to here there's another one that goes from here down to the water pump so the air compressor itself is water cooled so we're going to get rid of that tube that tube maybe we'll get to doing the actual main um radiator hoses but for right now i want to get all the smaller stuff done the radiator hoses themselves look intact that doesn't mean that they're great um but I have some small tubing that might fit for some of this smaller stuff and obviously I want to get rid of the the lines to the heater core and then this this uh, coolant heater essentially maybe one day I'll put it back in I'm not just gonna throw it away but for now I want to get it to the point where I'm not leaking coolant anywhere and I don't have any potential for losing like air for the air brakes because this one doesn't give me a lot of confidence so I've got some of the hose clamps already undone and start trying to find some stuff to fit we're gonna chop this real quick and see if we can get i'm not sure if that's gonna be a threaded pipe or not if it's threaded we'll try and find a cap if it's not i'm gonna unscrew it a little bit further in and try and cap it plug it back but we'll just have to see what we find when we get in there there is a shut off right here i doubt it works there's a shut off that's broken right there i doubt it works so this could get a little messy Okay, well, there's no coolant in that. That's good. This is a shut off. It is seized up. So I think what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and take it off and then plug that hole. I think we got it broke loose. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that thing was never going to work again. So I'll, I'll put some tape on that. We'll seal that up. And that's one down. It's like we do have threads in there, so we're going to leak a little coolant here. But, oh, stop. <clears throat> Not sure how good they are. Probably not very good. So these pig mats are absolutely perfect for absorbing this kind of situation, or you can throw them on the ground and collect any oil, coolant, grease. These particular ones will soak up anything. There's other ones they have, the white ones, that will only soak up oil, which is really nice. So you could leave them outside under a machine, and they will not get ruined by the rain. So I'm just going to run this down over the threads. Basically kind of like just cleaning them up. And we're going to take it off. We're going to put some thread tape on it and put it back on another nice thing about these these actual mats is you can take them 
and say you want a quick rag, rip one of the layers off. And now I've got a rag to wipe my hands with. So this line just broke and I just loosened this so we'll get that heater and that mess out of the way. So I found a plug that is actually a hex instead of a pipe cap. We're going to put this on there because then I can use a socket on it. So let's uh, switch that over. I'm also going to unscrew this a little bit. We're going to clean those threads up. All right, here we go. Got it. All right, cool. There we go. Saved most of the mess. I'm working on getting the uh, heater core out. Get it all unhooked. So this is where our leak was. We were draining coolant right there. Had rubbed through that hole, and that hose was just pouring hydraulic or pouring coolant right onto the ground. So for right now, we're going to delete on the heater core. I'll hang on to it. It looks like it's in pretty decent shape still usable all right well got everything all buttoned back up the engines all put back together i blocked off the ports for that um heater core so there's a port there port here port there got some uh new hoses on a few of these places just trying to eliminate any additional leaks but we have one more major well i wouldn't even call it major yet um the radiator leaks in this region somewhere so what we're going to do is fill it up with some water get it started get it warmed up to temp pull this cover off there's a this grate here will come off and then we'll be able to see where it's leaking and we'll be able to see whether or not we can pinch off a a, a tube and solder it closed or if we're going to have to get a different radiator it definitely looks like, and I'll show you later, that right along there, there's some major repairs already been done. So, let's throw some water in it and go from there. I'm going to start the engine up real quick and just uh, kind of monitor everything. So, let's get it started.
All right, well, there you have it. We finally got this old dog back up and moving under its own power. It is still struggling. Um, I think that it's got a transmission oil leak and it definitely needs to be filled up. Not to mention, I didn't have very good brakes. Um, and so the master cylinder is also probably low. It was when I found it, so is the transmission. Both of those things were issues I had to deal with when I first got the machine. All I did was add more and it has worked great since. Now that it has sat for a while, adding more tells me that we are leaking it out and I gotta figure out where that is. Um, other than that, I don't see any fuel leaks anywhere. I don't see any oil leaks so far. I do see it is leaking coolant right right there. If you see down in here, it's pretty wet. So right in this area, you can see somebody else's patch all the way along, probably from about there over and on down. So I need to pull this whole radiator. You can see a couple other radiator pinholes patched there. Um, all in all, I'm, I'm hoping it'll be as simple as just fixing up around where the actual upper tank is. Don't know for sure. I haven't seen any leaks on the other side of it, so I really do think it's right in this corner. Uh, shouldn't be too big of a deal. If it is, I'll have to look into getting a new one for the machine. But as of now, I still don't have a coolant gauge. The coolant gauge is not working. I need to figure out if it's the actual um, water temp sensor or if it's the gauge in the cab. Either way, it moves, it runs, it drives, it kind of stops. It starts, so that's where the little heater core was, and then one of the brackets for the seat was here and here, and it is really kind of wavy and a lot of rust jacking in this area, so I'm kind of thinking of this whole plate here, like replacing the whole thing, putting a new plate in. Not sure. Either way, I want to kind of try and um, close up this hole some, because that is how the raccoons were getting into this cab and just running amok. The other thing in here is you see these two are the bucket and and loader arm controls. They are leaking hydraulic fluid in that area. So you can kind of just see it. We scraped a bunch of it out of here, cleaned it all up, but you can see it's just caked on those valves, on the valve body there. So that will be a fix at some point for now. The plan is going to be just to clean it up, get a seat in it, and start working on the essentials. Get the transmission working well, get the brakes working well, and then we're gonna head towards, you know, cosmetic things and other things I'd like to do. So, I hope you enjoyed. Been a fun process getting this old beast back to life. Had its ups and downs and its challenges, but I need this machine. I've got some stuff I need to lift with it. And so, I am so glad to have it back in action and back usable here at Salvage Workshop. So. As always, a true thank you from me here at Salvage Workshop. I truly appreciate your time. I truly appreciate that you stopped and watched the video. If you like stuff like this, stick around. I've got tons of it. <laughs> so thank you as always. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.